Having just seen Alien Romulus in the cinema yesterday evening, I'll say that I went in with middle of the road expectations. I was looking forward to it, but I didn't get my hopes up, despite hearing so much hype coming from the fan base and from early reviews. I didn't want to be disappointed like I was with Covenant, as I was very excited for that movie, but I found it very underwhelming. But when watching Alien Romulus, I can say that I was not disappointed, and I actually did enjoy the film, but it didn't blow me away. It wasn't perfect, but it was entertaining and had a lot of cool moments, and it's just cool to have another real full fat alien movie once again. This is despite me watching the film in the true cinema experience, complete with strangers sitting right next to you and talking during it. Yeah, well, I just get so tired of idiots shooting their mouths off, laughing and clapping, makes me want to start poking eyes out and slashing guts and kicking throats. So so, being a brand new movie that many wouldn't have seen yet, I'll split this review into two sections. First, I'll talk about non-spoilers, then we'll talk about the stuff that contains spoilers. So, I found the story to be enjoyable, if a bit formulaic, and it didn't really expand on the Alien universe that much, but instead was a more localised and contained story. The basics are that a group of young adults born into a Wayland yutani mining colony want to escape their mundane, repetitious lives on this dark world where the colonists are subject to borderline slave labour. Despite this location only being in the first 10 or 15 minutes of the story, they did a good job of emphasising the harshness and hopelessness of life on the colony with subtleties, like how everyone is dressed in drab clothing and the very industrial joyless environment, with the workers living in poverty, which kind of resembles a mix of what it's like working in a factory with a third world country, and how the main character tries to apply to be moved somewhere else, but the quotas set by the company keep inflating, and she is told she now has to stay another five years. Also, how basically all their parents have died in the working conditions. They did a good job here making me empathise with them. So they find out a derelict decommissioned ship has drifted into their planet's gravity pull, and they come up with an idea to go to it and salvage the hypersleep tubes from it, as that would allow them to outfit their own ship with them, and that would then allow them to make the five year journey to a better planet they want to escape to. It turns out the derelict ship is actually a space station called Romulus with a deadly secret. They had discovered and were studying xenomorphs, and now there are no crew to be seen. Something that the film is praised for in this location, which is the main setting for most of the story, is its authentic capturing of the vibe of the original film, and it does very much resemble the first Alien to almost the same level as Alien Isolation did. So once they explore the station, the Xenomorphs start appearing and picking off our heroes one at a time. I found the pacing to be well done. It has a bit of a slow burn, but without getting boring, while it introduces us to the main characters and sets up the world, before reaching the Romulus, which is where the action picks up, and once from there, it really does rattle off exciting action and horror sequences one after the other. I did find though that a lot of what happened is told to us flat out in a few huge exposition dumps by a particular character. The characters are found to be passable, they weren't memorable or will have much staying power like how we remember the Nostromo's crew or the Colonial Marines, but not as drab and uninteresting as Alien 3's or Alien Covenant's characters. The performances technically were all perfectly fine, but the human characters aren't what this movie is going to be talked about for. Some people have praised the android, but to me he's certainly no Bishop or David. The two main characters are the only ones really worth mentioning, as most of the story revolves around them. There's Rain, who grew up on the Jackson Star Colony, whose parents are both dead, and her quote-unquote sibling, Andy, the early model android who was repaired and reprogrammed by her dad before he passed away. Something I noticed about Andy is they kind of ruined the naming convention with the androids, as the first movie's android was Ash, which begins with an A, Aliens had Bishop, which begins with B, 
Alien Resurrection had Cool, C, and Prometheus introduced David, D, but now we have Andy, so back to A, but now we have Andy, so back to A, or did they actually, as Romulus is set between the first two, so does it make sense for it to be A again? I wonder if this was intentional. I found these two characters to be decent, but not in the same league as Ripley or David for example. But the main takeaway is the creatures, the xenomorphs, with multiple of them and a return to practical effects for the most part, the adult xenomorphs being actors in physical costumes and face huggers being radio controlled models, and lots of cool attacks and other parts featuring them. Something I really enjoyed is how much they utilise face huggers in this movie. There has to be more scenes with them than any other alien film, and with some inventive scenarios for them to appear in as well. Normally we'll see a face hugger or two towards the start, then when they infect people they're sidelined, but in Alien Romulus they are in most of the attack scenes doing some really cool stuff and attacking alongside adult xenomorphs and working in tandem with them, which isn't something we've really seen until now. There was one scene where they swim around in the water and another where they try to come up with a plan to sneak by some, and being someone who finds the face huggers more disturbing than the actual xenomorphs themselves was very interesting to see. But that's not to take away from the actual aliens who are just as cool as ever with their head bite attacks and their razor sharp tails, and we also see an in between stage of their life cycle, an alien that's inside a cocoon as it has just grown from a chest burster to a drone. It's not something I really thought about before but seeing it here I think, why has it taken us this long till now? The special effects used are mostly good, things like the alien suits and the set design get positive marks, but what does bring it down a bit is some of the CGI which is a dead giveaway this had a smaller budget. I won't mention the exact part yet cause it'll be a spoiler, but it was pretty jarring. It did actually make me think of Prey as it was similar to that film, how it had very good practical but quite low quality CGI when the CGI did appear. So while we're on the negatives, something I hated was that there was some cringe references where people say the thing from the previous movies. I don't like that at all. They actually have the line, get away from her you bitch, and I can't lie to you about your chances but you have my sympathies. No, just no. Something interesting I found that reflects the different attitudes of different generations is how out of the few people who reacted to these lines, it was the older people who chuckled but the younger people who cringed. When Andy said the line from Aliens, I actually heard one guy in the audience say for fuck's sake out loud. But there was definitely more positives than negatives and some of the really cool parts were basically any scenes with the face huggers in and the cocoon I mentioned earlier and actually one of the really cool bits is when Rain finds a pulse rifle and it has this thing where the stock clamps to your shoulder and it articulates automatically at targets for her like aim assist would in a game and she shoots at a bunch of the aliens and the guns sound similar to the guns from aliens and also that would explain how she's able to wipe out a bunch of xenomorphs with no military training as well. And how then afterwards, because they're in zero G, she has to float through the floating acid. Very cool stuff. So I think that's a good amount of non-spoiler stuff. So now I'll talk about some spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, this is your chance to stop the video. Right, so the biggest spoilers I'd like to talk about are how, as rumoured, the alien from the first movie does appear and was the cause of the destruction of the Romulus. He is found by Wayland Dutani in space as he has formed a protective cocoon over himself and they take him on board and cut him out right at the start of the film, but he isn't really actually active in the movie as we only see him right at the start and then we see him dead in the ship during an exposition dump and they basically say, oh yeah the original alien was actually alive but they just shot him and there he is dead. That I felt was a bit strange and underwhelming, it could have been interesting to expand a bit more on how Big Chap actually caused the aliens to overrun the station, and it's also strange how it's just abandoned after Wayland finally getting their hands on the xenomorph, the station's overrun and then they just forget about it and leave it floating up there, 
Why haven't they gone back to it? And why are the main characters the only ones on a Wayland colony planet to go to it? You'd think the company people on the planet would be the first ones up there. Something that did surprise me is how the black goo from Prometheus and Covenant actually returned in this movie, something I didn't actually expect to happen. I thought this movie was to distance the franchise from the prequels, but no, it confirms they are in fact canon. And then the reveal of a new creature in the final act, when the Romulus scientists were studying the aliens, they extracted the black goo from them and wanted to use it to evolve humanity and create a perfect species to replace them. When Kay, who's pregnant, injects herself to heal herself with it, it turns her fetus into an alien-human hybrid, which kind of resembles a feral engineer with a xenomorph tail. It actually reminded me a lot of the newborn scene from Alien Resurrection, as it's a similar setup, and when it's born, it's kinda like the trilobite removal scene from Prometheus, and it made me feel kinda sick actually. And what I mentioned earlier about the part with the bad CGI, there is another android, the same model as Ash, who's only really there to deliver these huge exposition dumps, and the way they CGI'd the actor's face to look like Ian Holm from the first film looks terrible. It was very jarring and uncanny. I think they should have just gotten a different actor and just dress him up in the same clothes as Ash and they get the same point across, but the CGI for his face looked like something from 15 years ago, like how they had Arnie's face CGI'd into Terminator Salvation or something like that. So overall, I did like the film and enjoyed it, but it didn't blow me away and wasn't as good or better than Alien and Aliens like some people are saying. I'd say I like it on a similar level to Prometheus. I give Alien Romulus a 7.5 out of 10. An entertaining film with lots of cool bits, but some areas which let it down. Thanks for watching, and make sure to let us all know if you've seen the movie yet in the comments, and I'll catch you next time.